Hey guys, we've been introduced to anti-differentiation and we've seen the importance of that in context. Now we're just going to talk a little bit about the language and notation that we associate with anti-differentiation. Okay, so earlier we've talked about if we have dy dx, we can find the original function of y. So an example of that, if we have dy dx is 3x squared, we know pretty pretty intuitively that y is going to equal x cubed plus c because when we differentiate this that constant there can differentiate to zero leaving just 3x squared. We call this c, this constant, um, the constant of integration okay that will come up any time that we anti-differentiate or integrate. Um, and we say, let's talk about the language, we say that this is the integral so this thing here if we have dy dx going back and finding y, we call that integrating. Or this thing here is a symbol for finding the integral or the antiderivative of this function. And this dx just means with respect to the x function. Okay, so we can write our antiderivative, the integral of 3x squared with respect to x is equal to x cubed plus c. Okay, where this is the integral symbol. This dx means with respect to x and the process by finding that we call integrating. Now when we look at areas, these symbols actually come from somewhere, I'll, I'll talk a bit more about those later. This actually comes from a sum and this actually comes from a length of a rectangle but we'll explore the um, origin of these symbols a little bit later on. But we need to understand integral, integrating, know the symbols, know this constant of integration that will often pop up in the process of anti-differentiating. There's just some terms and some notation. Okay, so let's have a look. So now, <coughs> instead of finding just the anti-derivative, I could have this big, long, stretchy S. And that is ba basically saying find the anti-derivative of 7x to the 5 plus we with respect to x, just meaning that this is an x function. If it had this, integral of 7u uh, to the 5 plus 3, this would have to say du with respect to the u function. So if you're graphing that, you'd have a u function here and a function of u up there. Okay, so this is just to do with our variable. So now, of course, we can say that our integral of this function is, well, applying our um, our findings earlier. We've got x to the 6 over 6 because I don't have a 6 when I bring it out there so I get rid of it. But I've got the 7 so I put the 7 there. Plus what's the antiderivative or the integral of a constant? We know that's 3x plus c and we've got our constant of integration. All right, nice exponential function. We know that our exponent doesn't change, so we know the integral of 7e e to the 5x minus 3 with respect to x is going to come from an e to the 5x minus 3 function. There's a 7 there, so I say I want a 7 there, so I'm going to put a 7 there. Now think about when we differentiate this to move back to here. We're going to have the derivative of the exponent out here, so we'll have a 5 out here. We don't want the 5, so we divide by 5 to deal with that 5 that's going to come out, plus our constant of integration. And this last one, find the integral of 4 cos 3x with respect to x. It's asking for our antiderivative. So we know that um, it's going to come from a sine function, so we're going to have sine of 3x because sine of a function differentiates to the cos of a function. I have a 4 in the answer so I'm going to put a 4 here. But of course when I differentiate sine of 3x I'm going to have a 3 out the front. So notice I don't have a 3 here so I get rid of the 3 by dividing by 3 plus c. So that's a little introduction to the language and notation of differentiation, of integration. <laughs>